Hello, my name is David Faw and I work for KDAB. Welcome to this video in the series Multithreading with Qt. In this video, we are going to talk about the difference between Qt and the STL, which one provides us with a semaphore, which one has a thread pool, which one is more convenient for a condition variable. So let's compare the two, and this way you can decide what is best for you to use. It is actually perfectly possible to mix Qt and STL classes. For instance, if you call the method QThread current thread in a thread that was created with STD thread, this will be fine. It will actually return to you a pointer to a QThread that was created automatically by Qt to wrap your standard thread. This is called an adopted thread in Qt. So in general, which, which of the two should you prefer, Qt or the STL? It is important to notice that the STL is actually evolving much faster. There are many things coming into the STL, parallel algorithms, continuations, latches, barriers, atomic pointers, executors, concurrent queues. All of that is actually being developed in the STL and coming in the uh, next versions of C++ or the one after that, depending on which one of these. At the same time, the facilities in Qt are more convenient when we are talking about queue objects and event loops, because these concepts do not exist in the STL. So it is in our interest to compare the two and mix and match and use the best tool for the job at every step of the way. Let us start with the synchronization primitives. On the left, you, on the left sorry, you can find everything that Qt provides, and on the right, you can find everything that the STL provides. In Qt, there is only one mutex class, QMutex. In the standard library, you will find four different mutex classes depending on how many uh, different things you want to do with them, the complexity of the API that you need. Do you need a mutex that is recursive or not? Do you need to be able to do timed um, weights so you would lock with a timeout and, and so on? QMutex provides all of this in a single class while the STL has divided this up into four different classes in an attempt to make this more lightweight for the simple use cases. It is important to notice, though, that a non-recursive QMutex will never allocate memory or throw exceptions on Linux. So this is a quite performant uh, implementation. If you want to use a semaphore, then you will notice that only Qt provides a semaphore if you're using C++ 11, 14, or 17, there is no semaphore class in the STL. But with C++ 20, semaphores are finally coming into the standard library. For a shared mutex, or what you'd call a read-write lock, which differentiates between reading and writing, uh, this is something you will find in both, again, provided that your C++ STL is recent enough. When it comes to condition variables, or weight conditions in Qt, these actually exist in both implementations, but you should notice that the implementation in the STL is actually more convenient. You can pass a lambda for the condition, and it will be automatically re-evaluated whenever you call um, wait on the, on the condition variable. You provide the condition, and it's evaluated for you. With the QWait condition from Qt, you have to evaluate the condition yourself in a while loop around the call to wait. So it is just one more line, but you have to write it correctly. Um, for instance, don't write if, write while, otherwise this would be wrong. So this is something where the STL is more, is more convenient. When it comes to singletons or functions that should be called only once, um, the STL provides us with call once for functions. There is nothing like this in Qt. And on the other hand, Qt has uh, something called Q global static to create uh, thread safe singletons. There is obviously a solution for thread safe singletons in the uh, C standard. It's simply to create a static object on the stack, and this will be thread safe. Q, Q global static, however, has a bit more API. You can ask whether an object has been destroyed you can create it on demand and all of these things. Still, it is something where um, many people are moving towards the STL facilities of either call once for a function or a static object on the stack for a singleton. Now let's talk about lock management. Um, this, this is about the RAII classes that wrap QMutex or STD mutex. You know, those classes that can do the lock in the constructor and unlock in the destructor. These exist both in Qt and the STL. 
Um, they have different names, obviously. It would be QMutex Locker in Qt. It would be LockGuard in the STL, except that um, starting from C17, you have something that is more lightweight called Scott Lock. And in C++, uh, you will also find the unique lock, which is movable, which is something that Qt doesn't provide. So again, more choices on the STL side, three different lockers, where Qt only provides one. So in the, in the long run, you might prefer the ones from the STL. Also, because it's quite interesting to notice that, for instance, Qmutex provides the um, correct concept so that it can be used with the STL lockers, you know, all of them, the lock guard, the scoped lock, and the unique lock. So here again, you can mix and match. You can use a Qmutex with the um, STL lockers. And you can see on the slide more of this comparison. It's basically all the same. In the end, unless you're dealing with a read-write lock, you might prefer to use um, the lockers from the STL. And now let's have a look at the Atomics. Um, both Qt and the STL provides Atomics. What is interesting to notice is that actually the ones from Qt, ever since 5.7, they are actually built on top of the Atomics from the STL. And that is basically the only way to do this correctly. Uh, it's not possible to implement um, Atomics completely in the library. So the only correct implementation is the one from the STL. And the ones from Qt are basically historical at this point. So you should definitely port from the ones in Qt to the ones in the STL. They, they also provide more uh, control over the operations. All of the memory orderings are available and um, they are the way forward for sure. But you should be very careful when you do that migration because the methods called load and store, they don't actually have the same meaning in both implementations. In Qt, they use relaxed memory ordering, whereas in the STL, they use sequential consistency. So if you want to port to exactly the same thing, you should specify relaxed when porting. And finally, we can compare the uh, thread local storage implementations, where you can have one instance of an object per thread. This is something that is provided by Qt in Qthread storage, and it is something that the standard library provides with the thread local keyword. They both provide basically the same um, feature, but Qthread storage goes a little bit further because it provides you with an API to be able to check whether the per thread object has been created already and created only when you want. So you might be able to skip initialization if you don't want to create it and these kind of things. It's basically an API like has object, set object, get object. So this is a bit more than what the STL provides. So that's it for this video. I hope it's been useful for you to compare Qt and the STL and pick the best tool for the job in every situation. If you want to learn more about multithreading with Qt, you might want to check out the other videos in this series. Um, or we can also uh, provide you with a full three days training at your location where you can learn about all of this and a lot in a lot more details. Um, and we'd be happy to do that for you. Thank you.